The universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine. J.B.S. Haldane All around us, in every direction, lies space, our home, extending as far as the mind can grasp and possibly even infinitely beyond. Scattered throughout are celestial objects, phenomena and who knows what else. While many see space as breathtakingly beautiful, others find it terrifying. When pondering or viewing images of deep space, it's hard not to at least grasp this fear, if not feel it entirely. The sheer vastness, the uncertainty of what might be lurking within, the mystery of its phenomena, and the monstrous nature of its objects all contribute to a profound sense of unease. It's unclear what is more unsettling about space, what we don't know, what we do know, or the immense voids of nothingness that separate it all. The fear of space and celestial objects is known as astrophobia, cosmophobia or spacephobia. What often makes something frightening is the quality of being unknown. And the universe, relatively speaking, is almost entirely unknown. But what's unique about space is that what we do know is often equally terrifying. Gaining new knowledge about the cosmos often does not make what was previously unknown less disquieting, but rather more so. With each new discovery, we learn that out there surrounding us are conditions that make our worst nightmares seem like safe havens. Consider just the planets. When we think of space, planets might seem like islands of solace amidst the chaos and emptiness. In some cases, this is true, but in most cases, it couldn't be further from the truth. Many planets are not only utterly uninhabitable, but also unfathomably strange and horrifying. They are not the soft, plush, cute objects we see on baby mobiles. No, the reality is that most of them are gaseous monsters, so inhospitable, so absurd, so alien. They would make a baby's head explode, both figuratively and literally. Take Jupiter, a planet in our solar system. Jupiter is a gas giant 11 times wider than Earth. To put that into perspective, imagine a grape next to a basketball. In terms of volume, Jupiter could fit 1,300 Earths inside it. It's so massive and hostile that if Earth ever found itself in Jupiter's orbit, it would be destroyed by the effects of its gravitational force. If Earth somehow collided with Jupiter, it would be absorbed into Jupiter's atmosphere burned up and dissolved into its gas clouds and liquid metallic hydrogen like a drop of food colouring vanishing into the ocean, completely absorbed and erased from existence. Even with the most advanced and durable theoretical technology, trying to navigate this planet would be a nightmarish journey through miles deep rapidly swirling gas clouds with wind speeds of hundreds of miles per hour. Each mile deeper would get darker and darker as sunlight is increasingly shrouded by the clouds until you finally reach the outer mantle of the planet and submerge into a planet-wide ocean of glowing white-hot liquid metallic hydrogen. With no true surface on Jupiter, there would be nowhere to go or stand. And that's just within our solar system. Before 1992, humanity didn't even know for sure if there were other planets outside our solar system. But there are. Known as exoplanets, it's now estimated that there are around 200 billion planets in our galaxy alone. It's also estimated that there may be as many as 2 trillion galaxies in the known universe. That makes for an estimated 20 to 100 quintillion planets. Among these, there are countless Earth-like planets. There are also countless hellish planets, Planets that would make the ones in our solar system seem tame. Take the planet known as HD 189733 b, located in the constellation of Vulpecula, about 64 and a half light years away from our solar system. It appears to be a beautiful bright blue Earth-like planet with soft oceanic swirls forming marble-like patterns reminiscent of a refreshing work of Van Gogh. However, the conditions on this planet are so gruesome, merciless and bizarre that it sounds like the setting of a cosmic horror story written by the most disturbed individual. On HD 189733b, temperatures can exceed 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds reach up to 5,400 miles per hour, seven times the speed of sound, which are the fastest winds ever discovered in the universe. 
These constant winds whip rainstorms of molten glass shards sideways across the planet. Visiting this planet would mean being caught in a fiery cosmic tornado made of glass chunks that shred you apart with near infinite cuts. And that's just the planets. Stars, those beautiful twinkling little orbs of light found in children's nursery rhymes, are unfathomably more massive and powerful than nearly all planets. Jupiter is roughly 11 times wider than Earth. Our Sun is roughly 10 times wider than Jupiter. And our Sun is at best an average star. One of the largest known stars, a red supergiant named WOHG64, has an estimated radius over 1,540 times that of our Sun. If this star were placed at the center of our solar system, it would engulf the entire orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. More than a million Earths could fit inside our Sun. Several billion of our suns could fit inside WBHG 64. That's quadrillions of Earths. This star is like a universe in its own right, just made of hot, luminous gas and energy thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. A true hell. Twinkle, twinkle. When massive stars like Guapo HG 64 die, they form even stranger, larger, more powerful and ominous entities, perhaps the most unfathomable and unsettling entities in the known universe. After a star exhausts its fuel and the equilibrium of its radiation and gravity becomes disrupted, its core collapses and in a fraction of a second, it implodes on itself, resulting in a supernova explosion. If the star is large enough, what's left behind is a black hole, a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape it. Inside, at the center of a black hole, is what's known as a singularity, a point that is infinitely dense and infinitely small, where all conceptions of time and space break down. Why does the collapse of a star result in this? How can there be an apparent singularity, an infinitely dense and infinitely small thing in the universe? What happens at the singularity or beyond it? Does the singularity even really exist? We don't have the answers to these questions, but what we do know is that these galactic giants can grow to sizes so incomprehensible that they make even the largest stars seem average. One of, if not the largest known black holes in the observable universe is Tun 618. This black hole is at least 240 billion miles in diameter and likely much bigger as it is still growing. That's roughly 11 solar systems side by side. Galaxies worth of matter are consumed by this beast as it shines with the brightness of 100 trillion stars. What could possibly be bigger than that? Surely nothing. Well, that's exactly right. The inconceivably massive void separating everything, the cold, barren space between galaxies and superclusters of galaxies, make even Tun 618 look modest. One obscenely terrifying supervoid is known as Booty's Void, or the Great Nothing. Booty's Void has a diameter of around 330 million light years. The black hole Tun 618 has a diameter of around 0.04 light years. That makes Boots Void roughly 8.25 billion times larger than one of the largest black holes in the universe. That's 330 million mostly uninterrupted light years of primarily cold, dead, dark space. The mere thought of this vast emptiness can, paradoxically, evoke an intense feeling of constriction and claustrophobia. What could possibly be worse than this? Well, it gets worse. Perhaps the most unsettling fact and phenomenon of the universe is that Booty's void and all voids and the universe in general are expanding. Everything is spreading out. Everything in space, including us, is constantly moving, hurtling at speeds we can't even fathom. Right now, we are not just rotating around our planetary axis and revolving around the sun, but our galaxy and the group of galaxies we belong to, known as the local group, are moving through space at 1.3 million miles per hour. As a result of this universal expansion toward disorder, nearby galaxies will eventually aggregate and then be spread further and further apart from the rest of the universe. In the distant future, we will become so far apart from other galaxies and galaxy clusters 
that they won't even be detectable or knowable anymore, no matter what technology a species might have. If humanity or any consciously advanced species exists in these new galaxy formations, it will seem as though the entire universe is only one's own galaxy. It will seem as though that's all the universe ever was, is, and could be. One can only wonder what is out there right now that we no longer have access to. In the words of the renowned astronomer Edwin Hubble, with increasing distance, our knowledge fades and fades rapidly. Eventually, we reach the dim boundary, the utmost limits of our telescopes. There, we measure shadows and we search among ghostly errors of measurement for landmarks that are scarcely more substantial. Right now, floating through the vast uncertainty of space alongside trillions of other planets and celestial objects is Earth. Out of all of the objects in the universe, Earth is the only one that can harbour life as we know it, at least for now. Yet somehow we are surrounded by unimaginable monsters in our solar system, galaxy and universe that want to absorb, shred, crush, smash and kill anything that moves, anything that dares to have a pulse or think about having one. Despite this, Earth at this moment somehow sustains life by chance, by something by some entity, by some physics, by some anomaly, by some unknown mystery, by some multiverse. But for how long? What strange objects, planets or entities, natural or supernatural, might be out there looking back at us, contemplating their own perception of the universe or plotting something sinister? They will find us, they will come and they will inevitably consume, shred, crush, smash and kill because everything must return to the universe. Everything must die and feed the ever-growing darkness and monsters lurking within it. 